It's six past nine. Uh, now, there is a very serious warning coming from some child protection workers in Narragin this morning. Now, they are usually not allowed to speak publicly, but they are so fed up with their workload, they have written an open letter to their union. They say they are burnt out and they say they are at breaking point. Some staff have taken children home with them because there's nowhere else to put them. They are seriously worried that the pressure they are under could result in the death of a child. Their words, not mine. Now, if you work in child protection, we know how careful you have to be. So if you want to stay anonymous, you can. That's absolutely fine. And you can send me a text and let me know what things are like out there for you. 0437 922 720. If you are in a position to call, if you're comfortable doing that, one three hundred triple two seven twenty. I'm keen to see if this reflects what you are seeing on the ground. Ricky Hendon is the State Secretary of the Community and Public Sector Union. She represents these workers. Uh, Ricky, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Can you put into context for us um, how unusual it is for child protection workers to speak out like this? Uh, it's extremely unusual for child protection workers to speak out like this. They're obviously very limited in what they can say publicly about their work. It's very sensitive work and it's on behalf of the government. So they have to be quite um, you know, careful about what they say, but they are desperate. They are absolutely desperate. Tell us about what is happening in Narragin that are so concerning right now. Well, I guess across the whole of the child protection system, we've been saying for a very long time and have been communicating on behalf of our members um, that there is serious under-resourcing, but even with the resourcing, the inadequate resourcing that they currently have, in Narragin we're being advised that there are positions that have been vacant for more than 18 months, which is very, very significant. And what it's doing is um, creating a whole lot of additional pressure on the people who are already carrying huge caseloads to do even more work, and they've just reached breaking point and can't do it anymore. Can you explain what it is they are not able to do? So child protection workers a number of years ago had limits placed on how many cases they could safely carry and that came out of a whole lot of um, really difficult time for the department um, then of um, uh, community development. So uh, they, uh, that occurred because child, but there were a series of really serious cases where um, children were either abused in care um, and or, or were known to the department and died because of there was not appropriate action taken. So um, what happened was there were, there were, there were caseload caps placed on their, on their work. Now what we're finding is that people are carrying very, very full cases, um, but the caseload management isn't working correctly. So they're actually, it's being underreported how many cases they're carrying. They're carrying too much yet again. And uh, when there are further vacancies in the department, so in this case in Narragin, the vacancy is with a... a, a occupational group called a family support officer. They supervise contact with families, they transport children, they do a range of different, and they do some, some, some short-term care, so they do a range of functions, but because there are no workers in this um, particular office, it means that the child protection workers who carry those big caseloads and have to make some very critical decisions about children who are at risk or have been abused or neglected, um, they're having to carry on that work as well. So it's adding huge amounts of time to their work um, to the point where it's unsustainable. And as you've mentioned before as well, um, because they are so overworked and they can't provide the support they need to foster placements, foster placements are also falling down. OK, so then they say in this letter that I read, workers take kids home with them. I mean, is that unusual? Uh, it should be, but it's not. It's increasingly common across the sector and it's really problematic because the work that these people do, these child protection workers, is emotionally and mentally taxing work to listen to stories and be involved in stories of child abuse and neglect every day is very, very difficult. But when you're working extraordinarily long hours as well, plus then taking children home, there's absolutely no respite from, the, from, from this sort of work for these workers not to burn out, they need good amounts of leave. They need to be able to work reasonable hours and have that capacity to rest and recover so they continue to do their work. Is it we, allowed, though, just on that point of bringing a child home and, and keeping a child at your home overnight? Is that actually allowed under, under the department rules? They're placed under incredible pressure from the department. To, to do, do that. So but it's not their role so. to provide these people for a home. It's their role to find them a home. Yeah, it, Two it, very exactly. different things. Exactly. So... Um, but obviously they do this work because they care so much about the well-being of kids. And so when they're put um, in that position where they're 
having the hard word put on them to take a child home after, at the end of a very long and taxing day or a long and taxing week, they of course say yes. So we had, just as an example, we know that over the uh, Mother's Day long weekend, we had a worker take home three siblings because their placement broke down. Um, so she took those kids over that long weekend uh, and then had to appear at work on Monday and then took another child home um, to that week as well. Oh, that actually was the next night, so it was another child whose placement had broken down. So that's in a very short succession of, of time. Uh, it's something that is just unsustainable for child protection workers and very dangerous for the system. Ricky Hendon is my guest this morning, State Secretary of the CPSU and the CSA. Lots of... Uh, um acronyms there but basically she um, represents child protection workers and um, if you have a story to share if you could share your observations if this all sounds very familiar to you where you're working and if it's safer to text do that zero four three seven nine double two seven twenty. Uh, my partner says this listener has just left dcp an extremely unsupportive and unsustainable environment ministers have been warned over and over and heads should roll this uh letter from workers also says that it could they could see the death of a child uh, which is a very serious thing to say how could that happen well as i said before there's a reason why there are some limitations or supposed to be limitations on the number of cases a worker can carry and that's because when you're carrying too many of these very complex cases um you know, you miss information, you don't have this the level of involvement you should have in those cases. You miss things and kids fall through the cracks. Information that you should be picking up falls through the cracks. It's through no fault of those workers, but the circumstances that they're in don't allow them enough time to spend on those kids. The other issue is that there are um, just under, at the moment, a 1,000 cases within the department that are not allocated to a dedicated caseworker. And what does so that mean? So what that means is that they don't even... So this might be children in care cases, so kids that have already been brought into the care of the state. Um, it might be cases that require investigation, uh, but there are a series of, of cases, and those cases can be either individual children, especially in the case of um, children in care, or families in other cases, whole families of children, um, who they don't have a consistent caseworker on their case. Um, work is done... It's supposedly monitored, but it's really done on a very ad hoc basis in those cases and it means that there's no consistent eye there's no relationship building with that family or the fo or, or anybody else who's involved in that child's life um so the issue is i suppose that there's not a, a proper focus on that child in the system okay ricky hendon is their workload high then because demand for services is increasing or there aren't enough staff it's both um so really what we need in the child protection system is a system that has a... There is already supposedly a demand model that government follows to, to staff the system, but it's very clear to us that there are shortfalls. Our members are crying out and saying their workload is the worst it's ever been, that there are positions um, that when they end up vacant mean that the whole system just gets put under too much pressure. Um, workers are saying that there are vacancies that aren't filled. Um, and we know that, again, there are a 1,000 cases that can't be allocated to a dedicated caseworker. Gee. Um, so clearly... All of those indications are telling us that there are, there's just not enough staff in the system to do the work. Our members are really keen on having a really intelligent conversation about this with the decision makers to identify a number of different ways that that could be resolved in terms of how that staffing formula works, um, making sure that there are good early intervention systems uh, in there as well. Unfortunately, under the Barnett government, a number of the early intervention programs um, the government did uh, undertake were wound back. Uh, and um, I've, there's also been a lot of outsourcing to the non-government sector and uh, our members would be uh, supportive of there being more early intervention work that's done um, within the department so that there is a clear view into how that's working, how it's integrating with the other work that they do. Um, so they want to have an intelligent conversation about all the moving pieces that would fix this problem. But ultimately, it requires investment from government and requires them to invest in sorting this problem out. How much? Well, again, it depends on how many... How, how long's a piece of string? <laughs> it's a bit how long's a piece yeah. of string. But, you know, in our view is just to deal with that 1,000 cases, you would need at least 200 uh, workers to properly deal with the backlog of those of those 1,000 cases. And that need instance. is now. Like, is right now, 200 workers. I be yeah, we believe it's immediate.
And the government's response when you've raised these concerns, and I'm going to get to some texts in a moment, but a lot of people texting going, oh, we've been talking about this for 20 years. Yeah. So there has been a lot of discussion about this um, and workers have been communicating their concerns to the government and to the minister. Uh, what's unfortunate, I think, is that there are... Um, you know, our members tell us repeatedly that there is misrepresentation of the problem um, from their department to the minister and to the government. So I think that's the first problem, is that there needs to be some real uh, reckoning about the way that this is reported to government from the department okay. uh, so that they're getting a clear picture into what the problem is. Are you suggesting there's some manipulation of figures here? or? Well, this is what we hear from our members, okay. that they have big, big cases, um, a lot big case loads, and come reporting time that those cases are shuffled around. So that's a key problem for us, and we've been um, talking about that repeatedly. And we just really, at this point, need government to stop, to listen and to prioritise this issue. All right. Well, we have uh, asked to speak to Simone McGurk, the Communities Minister. She's actually on leave this week. Uh, the department, though, is sending a statement through, so we'll bring that to you when we get it. We do appreciate you, Ricky Hendon, bringing this to our attention. Um, it is important and we need to talk about it. And as Stuart says, Nadia, it sounds like the same warnings that the nurses raised at the children's hospital and a child did eventually die. These warnings need to be heard. Stuart, not a truer word said.